today I thought we'd take you through what I have for my winter store. Let's get okay, started. I'm going to do a quick disclaimer. We are a family of three, which is two adults and an eight-year-old. So this is the sort of food that we eat. Um, doesn't have any other potatoes in here because it's just not the right environment to store potatoes. Um, maybe it's something that we'll look to in the future, but right now uh, we don't store potatoes or flour or anything like that in here. Um, but I just wanted to jump in and say that because whenever you look at these sort of videos on youtube you see it like family at nine family at six and we just simply we don't have the need for that amount of food and we we this is not a food store this is a sort of walk-in wardrobe sort of experience for us so we come down and do shopping down here so for example i was here yesterday and i picked up some dried um mushrooms and we picked up some of the lovely tomatoes and stuff i'm going to i've just done my shopping again <laughs> whilst doing this video i really fancied some of this for tomorrow's breakfast so i'm gonna go ahead and grab one of them and i fancied having some of this and of course i'm getting bailey's dinner out because he eats two of them a day so that's what i'm gonna go ahead and do i'm probably gonna grab some uh chicken or some steak now and have that for dinner so, tonight. Let's get started on this shelf. This is probably my pride and joy here. And um, all of this here is tomatoes from our allotment. Okay, so we've got things like these are the Italian jars. Um, they're so beautiful, aren't they? These are Italian uh, canning jars, and I really like them because they're they're nice. They have bottles. They're very thin. So you can put lots of them. Um, I've only got one more of these because these are what I did in about 2020. And this is what I've got. Yeah, this is what I've got left over from 2020. As you can see, I sometimes can them a bit later. That's in September 2020. Um, we have these ones, which are like the traditional ball can canning jars. Um, they're great too. I don't always write what they are, but... I know that these are from this year and these will be gone. Okay. Should really write on them. I sometimes do, but I obviously forgotten that one. I've also got these and I'm going to butcher this. These are the La Perfet canning jars. These are fantastic. Um, these are French and they're very similar to the um, American ones, but they're a little bit bigger. So I think that this is a pint and this is 500 millilitres. Um, it does go a bit rusty only because it's so incredibly damp in here. It's nothing to do with the jar, I tell you. As you can see, this one, which is a little bit newer, has a beautiful lid. Also, if you leave the... These actually have lids that screw on. If you leave the lid that screws on on them, they do tend to rust because I put vinegar in the water when I'm canning. Another type of jar that I'm using old-fashioned um i think this is an english type of jar um very similar to the french jar i think i mean they're about the same size remember that canning things in the uk is not not always the same as it is in america we have different varieties available i love both of these i actually prefer these ones um because i think they look beautiful but they are expensive um furthermore <laughs> oh this is gonna be controversial i also can in old jars um this one's siphoned quite a lot so i'm gonna see if that one goes well, all right but most of the time they are a-okay i've just i've just started canning in um these jars for pressure canning because i just found out you could there is a group on facebook called yes we can darling i love them they are awesome and it's all full of people that have been canning for years and years and years and years i can the same way as my nana cans okay my grandma never had a pressure canner i do now but she never had one before all of these are pressure canned by the way even though they have a lot of tomatoes in them because i don't know i just I do it that way. I also put vinegar in, uh, sorry, lemon juice in them as well to make sure that they're okay. I've had more failed 
canning jars this year than any other and i think the reason why i have is because i canned more this year in terms of uh, like different recipes so these are curry here Ta -da. the first time i've ever canned curry um it's just got the spices and tomato it's very basic curry use that as a nice kind of base for my curries i like that i've also got roasted tomato and basil so roasted tomato and basil that's really exciting that one i find if you roast your tomatoes, I tend to, all of them are roasted tomatoes. I prefer it when they're roasted. I also include all of the skins in my tomato sauces. And I know that half of you are thinking that's disgusting. Okay, so this stuff here. Um, once again, I've got different jars. I've got this one. So these are all salsa, okay? Pretty much 90% of these are salsa, okay? Um, I love salsa, as you can tell. I really like salsa um i'm gonna talk you through them so we've got different types of salsa this one is just a normal plain salsa no chilies in that one we have pineapple salsa and we have oh, actually this is a nice way of looking at it. it's pineapple salsa and this one is more pineapple salsa i really like pineapple salsa uh this is a spicy salsa so this is a spicy one now, these ones here, once again, I've got some old-fashioned. Um, I actually bought these, and I thought they were these ones. Um, I didn't read it properly. But these have worked out really well for salsa. Mm. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Are you being a pesty pound? So, these, this salsa here is about enough for two uh, plates, for me personally. I love salsa. I love salsa. <laughs> Bailey is being miserable, look. Her little face. Hello. Mm -hmm. oh, I really like these jars because they're about about one meals, uh, one or two meals worth. I love salsa, so it's worked really well. I do. Um, this is a cherry tomato salsa with snack peppers, lots of garlic in there, and lots of um, just all sorts of yummy stuff. Bit of herbage great thing normally people get rid of the liquid but i quite like the liquid i think it's quite nice i don't use salad dressing so that is like all in one salad dressing there spicy one basically the same recipe but it actually has ghost chilies and other chilies in there it's not particularly spicy because my daughter can still eat it um so i couple it with some fermented jalapenos which is great i mean this is a really nice one look all the onions all of this is homegrown from our allotment get one from the back this is a um, pineapple salsa we love pineapple but when we eat it it hurts our mouths we have to cook it before we eat it um so yeah this is a great way of sort of having it on hand so that we have it whenever we want once again we've got onions we've got herbs we've got all sorts of tomatoes and things like that from the allotment and i think it makes a great sort of color being all of the different colored tomatoes and peppers and things um all of these like i said most of these are salsa and i really love them um however we've got other things like this is a piri piri sauce made from all the ingredients down our allotment as you can see it has a great flavor it has a really uh sorry fantastic color it has a great flavor i've used many jars of this i'm going to have to kind of triple down on this particular recipe it is amazing all right we've well, got two jars of that left so it is important that i do way 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 more than that next year so we only kind of um so we only sort of produce and make things that we eat and how much we eat for example this it is december uh, we've eaten probably about half of this already so you can see that there's quite a lot well i want to budget for like one of these every sort of twice a week so i do have my last batch that is currently on the hob simmering away um because I freeze some of it too. So it is important that I have that because we're not going to have tomatoes until probably about May 
end of May, beginning of June. Same with salsa. I want to have enough salsa that I don't have to limit it because in the salsa, when it gets up to spring and up to summer, I will be eating probably one of these every other day. So I love salsa. But this has absolutely no preservatives or chemicals in there at all. We do also have, this really should be done there. We also have on this shelf, we have things like chicken, um, sorry, veg, vegetable stock. This is from 2020, uh, 2021, so last year's. We still have four jars of that left over. Um, I'm not a great fan of scanning it. I think it has a like a tainted flavour to it. Um, so we are still eating through that, but it is a slow go up. Okay, so this level here. Uh, we have things that like jams and things. This is our apple sauce. Uh, the apple sauce this year was very kind of like uh, mushy. I think it's because we used cooking apples. Normally I use eating apples and I keep the skins on. So that's something that I've learned. But this is amazing with some yogurt. In fact, I'm going to take one of those down to the house. Um, this here is the same recipe as this but this is pears we did at one point have quite a few pears come in um come in a delivery or something and once again all organic and locally sourced that's nice these are actually from my allotment neighbor so thank you so much for that and he gave me these completely for free in trade of some squash this here is my rhubarb jam this stuff is dangerous it is so good that you could sit there with a spoon and eat the whole lot you've got to be super careful of this it's a great recipe it has ginger in it it's just super yummy um and it is a kind of sticky jam i also have for example this is plum plum and blueberry jam um, whenever I have too much fruit, because we do like to eat a lot of fruit, when it's sort of overwhelming for us, I do make jams out of it. I really like jams, and once again, these are the Italian beautiful bottles, aren't they? And this is more of a compote, really, than a jam. Once again, really good with yoghurt. I eat yoghurt every day. I believe this is the same flavour. Yep, yeah, blue bar, <laughs> jam, uh, plum and black currant, this one blackcurrant jam from our blackcurrant bushes as you see really beautiful bottles there uh, these are the italian ones they're really lovely and um, here another italian bottle this is pineapple syrup great with pancake uh this is also a, another jam this is rose hip jam it goes really dark um in hindsight i probably wouldn't use these sort of jars for jam uh, but compots are really good in them. Uh, okay, so these are our mushrooms. I'm uh, going to grow more mushrooms now that these are running out. I really love mushroom powders. Um, and these are so easy to do. Just dried them on the dehumidifier and then blended them up. They're awesome. I've already got one of these down the house. We, we went through that in about a year. So that is, it's so great to like throw into things. Um, gravies and things like that. Anything that you use mushroom with, you can just stir them in, give them a couple of minutes to rehydrate. They're amazing. So we have baked beans. Um, these are something that we've had for ages from Aldi. I mean, um, we've got some canned fish. I don't remember. Pilchard. Um, I like these quite a lot on things like toast. We also have some very, very large. Wow, these are old very large concentrated tomato paste i don't really use this because we make our own powdered uh, but we have quite a lot of it because i used to use it before we started growing at such a large area um i also have things like soy sauce here um i'm gonna show you if i bring you down okay so we have things here like sweet chili sauce we made this i think i did this on the channel actually love this stuff this stuff's amazing so that's my sweet chili sauce i've also got things like cowboy candy uh which i made from jalapenos um very thick stuff i also have some leftover cowboy that's not it where is it leftover cowboy candy syrup i'm actually probably going to make 
um, that with some salmon or something. Um, I love these. Every time they get low, so for example, if I kind of use all the three, I'll make another large batch of this. But until I get lower, there's no point because I'll probably do this within the year and I like to keep refreshing it. This is the soy sauce that I use to make this. Um, I always have quite a lot on hand. These are the um, some of the pepper chili, what are they call pickles that we made this year. These are the lemon cucumbers. I find them really good and quite sort of easy to eat from um we've already got a jar open so these are just chilling here got another large jar of pickles from the allotment um this will probably do us for the year uh, because we've got about five or six jars down the house already okay so this is the other side of this particular um storage up there i've got a um storage tank i'm going to take down the allotment but on this side we actually store all of our empty demi johns these are the demi johns we make wine and cider with um at the moment we only have bottled so we're going to be making some shortly here we store normally our fermenting demi johns because they're quite tall with the uh, bubble seal thing on them we also store these um these are glass containers that we use to make kombucha so when we have kombucha here we'll just cover it up and let it bubble away it's quite cold down here especially in the um in the winter it's actually frozen in here so it is rather cold and i think that's where i've lost some of my jars with the contents it's frozen and it's popped the lid here we have all of the squash that we have sort of harvested together we have this here which is all of the buffy balls that we have they're down here just chilling for storage because it's nice and dry cold down here um with loads of these left i mean this is a whole entire box full of them we have some down the house still as well of course what we're normally eating goes down the house so here we have our garlic that we have left remember all of this garlic is in all of that canned goods as well we also have our squash so this is a lovely my favorite squash this year actually this is a mashed potato squash and a baked potato squash and we still have some of our teeny tiny little um uh, jack b smalls uh they're quite cute these are like <laughs> these are just overthrowing aren't they remember this was a volunteer squash it's ridiculous how many we've got there okay so we've got more squash here we've got a spaghetti squash more of this mashed potato squash we've got these ones which are called taffy we've still got loads loads probably about half as much as no probably about this much actually maybe more down the house which i just take every day um i kind of look, make sure that i'm looking for any blemishes that means that they're going soft or that they are going bad so that i pick those first for example here you see how it's starting to sort of wrinkle this could be a sign that this is on its way out so these these ones are the ones that i'm going to be eating next because they don't store as well so for example this squash here uh, wasn't as mature when i picked it because of the frost and as you can see it's starting to go bad so this will probably go down the allotment for chickens or some of our birds it won't go to my uh ducks because they don't have the beaks to able to eat it but this is what you're looking for when you're looking to pick out anything that is starting to go bad as you can see it's gone rather squishy and that's because it was so young so i do store a lot of stuff in these shelves um this takes a lot of work though uh not so much the um squashes all the potatoes are down the house but when it comes to the jars, it takes a lot of work. So I'm going to show you what we also do. So um, this is also what we've been harvesting. So we've still got some things like sweet corn. We've got some peppers, which are fantastic. We've got loads of bags of them. We've got the big pumpkins that don't last that long and going a bit squishy. We've got things like more peppers. Um, we've got some aubergine, oh sorry, beans. I know we've got some aubergines in here. Ah, oh, and some stuffed jalapenos with some cheese spread. They're really good. 
And I know we've got some aubergines in there as well. Um, so these are all of the vegetables that we we harvest, but we don't can, okay? So some of them we've kept as chilli sauces and stuff. We've got so many. These are just snack peppers. We get so many of them, which is great. So I will be throwing them into stews and soups and stuff like that. This is how I prefer to keep my stock. So it is frozen. Um, obviously, but I've frozen it in the canning jars. And the reason I've done that is because I like the flavour better and I use it more if it has been frozen like this. I'll come down here on a Sunday and I'll grab this and make this into gravy. Whoops. Another way I like to um, keep my stock in ice cube trays because sometimes I only need a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll pop them out and I'll put them into a bag and leave them in there. So these are new and I really like these. This is a great way of keeping ginger and garlic as well. The rest in there is just meat that we get from the butcher. As you can see, we've all packaged it ourselves. And once again, this is just an old secondhand freezer. Freezing is super convenient because it takes less work. Um, freezing is really convenient for us. It, it takes less work. So we do go ahead and freeze a load of stuff. We've just taken all of the tomatoes out and defrosted the freezer so that we, it looks really empty, but before we defrost it, it was at the maximum level. So we're very happy that it's not going to be too much in there because we like to empty it out every so often, give it a good clean out. It took us all day yesterday to defrost this freezer and move it over here. We've also moved these shelves over here just because I think they're more convenient. And if they're more convenient, you're going to use them, aren't you? We also have a one of these tall fridges. It's not very much in here, but I'll show you. So, um, the, the issue we've had with this fridge is we had lots of J2Os in here and because it hit like ridiculously cold temperatures, ridiculously cold temperatures, the fridge actually froze. So we've had to come through and we have, well, this is the remnants of it. That is just one box of just smashed J2Os. Um, we got them for Christmas. They are a lovely tree, but at this stage, they were all for I was really ruining the day. So I've got things like um, Bisco paste. I love this. Um, we've got some jams that we've already opened. This is chili jam that I've made. There is some over there. Uh, once again, they're beautiful bottles. Um, I put it in the fridge. You don't actually have to store it in the fridge, but I choose to. Um, I've got some chutneys that friends from the allotment have given me. Um, uh, this one I really like. This is a courgette, lemon and ginger uh, chutney, but I use it on things like chicken when you're just having like a, a really fast sort of like midweek meal. It's really great. It's really difficult when you're cooking from scratch to have things that are just like throw and go. So that's a really good one. This is um, grape jam, but it never set. So we're just going to call it grape juice. Um, this is probably the same sort of stuff. This is a squash that was a jam but never set. Uh, we use them as sort of like mix-ins into like drinks and stuff in the summer. Uh, this one's really great. I made this for one of our neighbours and we only kept one jar. It is a marmalade, a lemon marmalade. Really good on le uh, lemon chicken. Like in instant lemon chicken, it's great. Um, then we've got some other sort of compots again. That is a um, a plum compot. So this is the one that we'll be using first. Everything stinks of J2O, of course. Then we've got some more of these um, syrups that we use as squashes. We have, I made, this is Branston. Um, it's not as dark because I didn't use the right vinegar, but I think it tastes great and I love Branston. This is some more fruit jam. It's really dark, really thick as well. That was when I started to make jams. So another syrup here. Once again, we use that as a squash substitute. 
we have things like because we love the taste of pineapple but we don't eat them raw um we have some pineapple jam here um of course it's started to be opened but because of the sugar content it's fine this is the english recipe um and we have some green tomato chutney we have this down here because when we do barbecues we come out and we grab it and we use it itself like as a sort of spicy addition to like any meats that we're having this is a um homemade actually mm, open jam look at that lovely stuff so lots of this stuff has come down here as our second fridge so that we have a bit more space in the house okay it used to be a lot more um full but we are eating on it so it does tend to sort of reduce over the time this isn't like just storage for storage sake because we do eat on it and we do finish it i might take that lemon down the house so that we can have that for dinner tonight we also have our ferments in here so for example that's kombucha that's just normal straight up kombucha that's how we like to drink it we don't flavor it we think it's nice as it is we like it quite sweet so that's in here as well uh we're continuing with more of the syrups that we use like they'll probably be gone by the end of the year i think that's strawberry syrup maybe um i don't remember it's all sterilised though, so it, it doesn't actually need to be in here, but we just put it in here. Um, this is more kombucha. Um, I really like this stuff. We do drink quite a lot of it over the Christmas break because it's like a fizzy drink, isn't it? Um, and we've got things like fermented carrots. These are probably one of my favourite snacks to have. Whenever we have too many carrots, we ferment them. And they're like a super, super nice snack to have. And you eat them pretty much i'd take a jar like this into work and i'll eat through them over the course like whenever i fancy them i'll just take them out chop them up put them in a salad um and they're quite good they're better to digest like that as well so we have all of those in this fridge the only other thing i've got to show you oh we normally store here we store um root vegetables but at the moment because of all of the j2o's that smashed and melted when we came down here it wasn't a pretty sight so we've had to there was only a few of them left because they were from last year but we're going to um go and harvest some more and then we'll be able to fill these drawers up as well we normally fill them up with compost and have them in here which is awesome oh we also have things like a juices for when we have kids over we have kids come over um to do easter hunts and things like that and when we have that we have this fridge as like a treat fridge not something that we normally have on a daily basis so with all um with all canning comes canning jars these are our empty canning jars a pretty much have gone through them this year as you can see uh let's say 2022 on them so i just make sure that they're closed and i put them up here i don't like the idea of dust and debris getting in them so i've ordered already some more flats and we will go ahead and put them into uh like these jars once we've done the canning you know today um, I've also got things like these are so helpful. These are the mushroom sort of things that I do my harvesting in. These just get stored here for the winter. Uh, every so often I'll use these to transport seedlings, which is really helpful because they don't bend and they're really great. Um, I've got some of these La Perfect really big jars. I use these for storage of anything like... Um, any powders I make, etc., because they're just so because of the wide mouth, they are so fantastic to store in. Um, in addition, you've got a cap that goes over them, and then you've got these jar lids. So I really, I really enjoy these jars. I think they're beautiful, and I think they're very easy to use. In fact, I do know that I need to have one of these down the house because I've put some lentils away. Um, like i said we use all sorts of jars these are old jars for where we used to buy salsa i don't think i'm going to be buying salsa anytime soon 
Um, so this is what we used to buy. I think it's like Domino's or whatever it is. And we used, I used to eat that in two sittings, but it's full of chemicals. This is what we've done to improve that. These are labels that we make, um, the Royal We being I, out of milk bottles. So um, when we went to the milkman, it was a struggle to get these. So we do ask our friends and family to get them. Also, you'll notice that there's lots of jars here, as in secondhand jars. So some of them are things that I bought. For example, sliced jalapenos before I made my own love them but some of them are donated to me by friends neighbors relatives um because i tend to give them things like they'll give me a whole case of jars my mother-in-law recently gave me an entire case a case of these jam jars which are my favorite jars for making jam aren't they beautiful they're so lovely she gave me a whole case of these because they saved them for my sister-in-law's wedding um, so she had, it's taken like a good two years and afterwards she gave them to me because she knows I like jars. So thank you so much. Really good. Um, so we've got some things like from the remnants of what we used to buy. Uh, this was a great peri peri sauce from Aldi. We now make our own so we don't, we don't buy this anymore. But it is a great sort of option if you um, don't have enough room to make things. But lots of the jars we do get from friends and family and we just put them in these sort of big cases. All of these are jars. Um, and the back are the canning jars, um, old fashioned ones. So when I do all my canning, I'll just come out and grab these. Um, yeah. I've also got things like, here I'll show you. This is calcium hydroxide from our eggs if we get enough eggs we do store them in calcium hydroxide which glasses them i'll show you what it looks like it's just this it's nothing too interesting but it allows us to keep the eggs for years um if we get enough we did not have a good laying season this year uh, we do did lose our two ducks that were meant to be like replacement ducks um due to a fox attack so these ones are getting a little bit they should still be okay for laying but they're getting a little bit slower so we kind of wanted to retire them and have them just as pets and have two replacements but we didn't um it was a horrible accident my daughter was beside herself we didn't actually announce it because i was so upset um, i actually cried and cried and cried because you you raise these birds from your eggs in your hand and you're stroking them and i've got pictures of them with like my niece and nephew and we had them for ease oh don't when the fox got them it was a mistake um it was something we learned from it's something that i'm not i'm not okay with talking about yet because it really upsets me um but it does mean like on a practical sense uh, emotions aside it does mean that we don't have young ducks this year but i honestly i would have done anything just to them never to lay and then just to be here because they were gorgeous ducks um and they were our sort of first generation of ducks that we raised from eggs our turkey actually sat on them and she did a really good mama duck sort of job and then we had to seize the eggs from her because we got a random very very cold snap um and we raised them indoors because it was just too cold for them basically but yeah it was it was amazing experience and i don't know if we're going to do that again this year because my ducks look like they're sitting but it is january so i don't really want ducks this early because it's going to be a long haul until they can go outside and be ducks outside um and ducks are really messy right so we've got some practical stuff here we've got our incubator that we use for hatching chicks and ducklings um this is the brooder as well the mother hen uh we also have behind you you don't see but we've got some lamps as well oh no i lied look just move this random plant out these are pretty much everything you need. We've got a little camera because we like to watch the ducks to see if they're all right or the chicks, make sure they're eating and things without coming down here and disturbing them. We've got heat lamps um, that we use to heat the brooder. We've also got things like their tiny little feeders. I'm gonna show you Ooh, in here. Oh, see if you can see them. 
No, you can't. I'll bring you two of them because I can't get them out. Can you see? Yeah. So we've got those. They're the starter ones and then we graduate to the larger ones. Uh, we've got random jugs because we were using them to clean the ice yesterday. Um, and then you've got the sort of um, things that I use for gardening. Um, I really wanted one of these. Um, they're awesome. So I've got one of those. I've got some soil, small soil blocks as well. They have different settings on them, depending on what you're going to grow. Um, I've got these little cell trays. These are new to me. I've got these. Um, I've got quite a few of them. I've grown onions in them this year. They come in like a mega pack. I think there's 48 cells in there, which is pretty cool. Um, I've also got some of these rock wool, which you saw me use last year. I always have at least a pack of those just hanging about. Um, I don't know if I want to start with them in this. I'm not sure how I'm starting seeds this year. I've got nutrients as well, just in case I need it, because if I start off with soil blocks, I do start it off with nutrients because it has no nutrients in it. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing yet. I've also got things like ooh, soil. Um, that is left over from last year. I'm still growing things in it. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to be doing. So I don't I don't know what I'm going to be doing next year in time, in terms, in terms of growing seedlings i haven't really decided yet i'm gonna start them under grow lights i'm gonna try to grow them i don't know if i'm uh, what i'm going to do in terms of how i'm gonna grow i might do them under grow lights i might start them out over the allotment i'm not 100 percent sure yet so we try to grow everything and eat it seasonally and we try to can and store our own food without a root cellar it is very difficult to store well it's not very difficult but it is more difficult to store things without a root cellar than if you did have one so if you like this whole sort of content maybe you'd like to see a tour of what we have inside the house in terms of things which we grow down the allotment please let me know and please follow along hopefully the next time i do one of these if this is something you want to watch you'll see all of our ferments that are going here maybe even some sauerkrauts and things like that because at the moment we are fresh out yeah. but if you like this sort of content and you want to follow us along and see how we fill this up with food over the next uh, the next year please go ahead and subscribe because this is where you're going to see it now. right thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye